instead of letting it go stale and throwing it in the trash, we've got some ideas on how you can repurpose that leftover bread. Here in our Studio 41 kitchen with a recipe to help you out, Hewn Bread co-owner and director of baking operations, Ellen King. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Okay, I'm going to be honest and admit, anytime I think of leftover bread, I think... Bread pudding. Yeah. Oh. But now you're saying, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, I just, that's the natural instinct. And when someone said, you want to go do a segment on leftover bread? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, will you do bread pudding? No, no, like, no. I just don't. I don't like bread pudding. I don't either. I, and, you know, it's like, I'd rather just, like, compost my bread. And this is eat. much more yeah. savory. I, I was going to say, we a lot tend to throw it to the birds sometimes. That's it, yeah, right? right? So this is a panade. It's actually, my sister-in-law is French. And I asked her, I'm like, what is the real definition? Because it's a French word. And she said something like, basically, Basically, it means that you're in the blank, meaning you're in like in a mess. Oh, okay. Or, okay. Uh, you could insert a swear word. In and the I'm weeds, like, as they in say. In the weeds, yes. as they say. And so it just means like taking everything that you kind of have and using it into a dish that'll be transported into a savory dish. Oh, so, fantastic. Um, for me, I kind of am always looking for how do you feed teenagers? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Like you just need abundance mm -hmm. and you need healthy. So what we have here is it's just it's kind of like everything I had in my refrigerator at home. Okay. The one thing that took a little time is beans, right? because yep. I wanted protein. You could add meat into this if you want. I try and just make it so easy. So I add some uh, heritage variety beans, and then I have some chard. Now, you'll see I had to pre-cook a little bit of this sure. for the show, because we mm -hmm. only have five minutes, yep, right? Sure. So, so one of the things that I love is this is pretty easy. So I add my oil. Uh, you can use olive oil, grapeseed oil, whatever. I don't use canola oil at all. Okay. Um, it's just not that great of an oil to use for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, onions, yep. start there. Um, this is already hot. I put my onions in at the bottom. Those so are I, caramelized. These onions. are slightly caramelized. So okay. you take them till they're just got a little bit of that amber color. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get them burned or anything because they're just gonna cook and ooze as they bake because we're gonna bake this dish. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put it all in here. Next, I have my leeks. So I cook these down probably like three to four minutes oh, easy. with my leeks. Okay. And you can do a few things. In the recipe, I talk about layering it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to layer. You can throw everything in here and uh, cook it down and then, you know, put it in your oven. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have my uh, chard. Yeah, because you and I were talking, like, it's so good for you, but I'm not a fan of chard. Swiss kale. Chard. I, is yeah. it just plain chard or it's Swiss just, chard? It's, yeah, it's Swiss chard. You could use kale if you want, like mm -hmm. a dinosaur kale or, yeah. you know, any kind of kale. Or you can even use dandelion greens, whatever kind of hearty green you want. Um, but, yeah, I don't love kale, chard, any of but that. But it cooks mm -hmm. down well. But it this. cooks down really yeah. well, and then it gets incorporated into this, and it becomes like a really nice, delicious accompaniment. Okay. okay. Now, so like one of the things I like to do with chard is you'll see like, what do you do with the stems? Yeah, right? I know. So I'll save these. I'll chop them down really small, as small as I can, and throw them in there as well. For color? For No, just for the, the flavor oh, and the okay. flavor. Okay. okay. A All little right. extra crunch. All right. So we've got this cooking. We'll add in our garlic, which it I'm sure so everybody oh, yes. can smell. Oh, yes. It makes it smell so good. Yep. So we'll let that cook, you know, it, probably like two minutes. Really, you're going to stick this in the oven for about 40 minutes as you go and, like, deal with your kids, mm -hmm. like, yeah. getting them off yeah. their phones. <laughs> yes. It's almost at the table, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so get this together. Next step I do is uh, I'm going to add the chard in, and you'll see this actually, you see how this was actually two bunches of chard. Okay. Wow, look down at how it cooked down. With just yeah. a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and then I'm going to kind of toss this in here. Okay. People at home, I'm trying to see what it looks like on the, on the I can only imagine, this looks just uh, delicious. No, of course <laughs> it does. It I'm smells good it's too. Like so we can, come on and we can do provide like a... that commentary for folks okay, at home. Great, yes. thank you. So I'm gonna incorporate all this, mix this in so that it'll all be blended. And then kind of the best part of how you use your leftover bread is, You'll take your beans. I add my beans in here now, so I get my layer. So it and sounds like the bread. In there too? There's a little bit of li uh, liquid left over from the beans because the beans, the liquid's so nutritious. Oh, got Because it. it's got a lot of the uh, minerals and vitamins in the cooking liquid. Okay. Mm. All right. What kind of beans were those again? These were called um, Anasazi beans. Okay. They're a heritage variety of beans grown in Idaho. Got it. Okay. So uh, I ha we sell so many beans at the bakery, and I love beans. Yeah, it's good protein. All right. 
This is our bread. Okay. So all Which the bread is a, we make, it's a sourdough. Okay. How many days country. old? This is probably four days oh. now. Okay, so it's really crispy. It's pretty crunchy. crispy. Yeah, yeah okay. it's pretty dry. So like if you, if we were to, yeah, I wouldn't eat this. Basically a crouton. Yes. It's a crouton. <laughs> I'm not gonna chip a tooth, but okay. yeah, it's, it's gonna be uh, pretty hard to eat this. So I'm gonna put this, lower it, load it up in here. Okay. And then two of the best things that come is you can use a broth. So you can use a veggie broth. If you want to make it vegetarian, you can use a chicken stock. This is actually chicken stock. Okay. And then I have my cheese. So this is an uh, aged Parmesan. So oh, add that's in. That's going to give it some nice yeah. flavor This there. is going to add nice flavor. I'm going to save the rest because what you want to do is you want to put it on the top after you're almost done baking so it'll kind of get that dark, caramelized, yeah. crispy looking flavor. Okay. And then I pour my stock in. You don't want it to be totally saturated, and with the bread, especially a sourdough, you need to give it a little bit of time to absorb the liquid, because otherwise you'll overfill it. Okay. So you just kind of let this cook, and we can talk about some other ideas for used bread, leftover okay, bread, let's right? let's do that. So we'll let this cook. So, you know, what I like to do sometimes with leftover bread is, oh geez, I'll make a French toast, especially if it's oh, a sourdough. Yeah. You cut the you cut the dough or you cut the bread maybe like a half inch. You soak it in your egg mixture mm -hmm. and let it sit there for a, I'm not joking about an hour. Okay. Just absorbing into it that and then good. you'll you'll cook it on your uh, griddle or whatever you have at home, cast iron skillet. And the flavor is so infused and rich in it. So I'll add just like a little bit of uh, vanilla bean, a little bit of eggs. It doesn't get soggy. Milk. It does not get soggy. Mm. No. Nope. But you're cooking it till it's no longer soggy I on the inside. I cook it until it's no longer soggy on the inside. Okay. So you sear it on each side and it's the most delicious French toast. So good. Um, Let's talk about Hume. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, you are a beautiful artisan bakery. Yeah, Tell you. us a little bit more. So we're a bakery in Evanston. Uh, it's uh, owned by myself and my partner, so mm -hmm. woman-owned business. Uh, we've been around 10 years. We make breads, pastries, so croissants, yes. every Look sort of croissant, that looks so uh, good. brioche. We make sandwiches. We have a lot of holiday specials coming up for Hanukkah and Christmas. So we have uh, Hanukkah's right around the corner. Yep. Uh, so we have rugula coming up. We have, um, ah, thank you. We'll put that on there. And then, we get to we're, gonna, we're gonna try this real quick. <laughs> there we go, yeah. So, to wrap this up, what we'll do is we'll put the parchment paper on top of this. We'll stick this with a nice lid in the oven and let it cook for 45 minutes. Okay. And it'll become, you'll you'll this. see. And then you put the cheese on. Before and then you put the cheese five. right before. Yeah, last okay. like 10 minutes just to kind of get that nice caramelized top. How do you serve Ooh. this? Do you serve it hot? Just do you like serve that. it cold? You, I would serve it warm. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's good. This is gonna be, like, you want it to be a little bit warm. Depends on, you could also use this two days later. You can and then fry it. fry it in a pan, you <laughs> yeah, said that Fry too. it in a pan. All right, we wanna get all the information up for Hewn Bakery. Uh, you get some great ideas there. On uh, Central Street in Evanston, you can see the website there, hewnbread.com, and the social media handles. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this looks great. Flavorful, very mm -hmm. flavorful. Thank you so much.